The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. Paul McKenna. So this is an interview I've done with uh, someone that I know very well. I, I've read Paul's books uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I'm a massive fan of everything he's done, even his old cassettes. Uh, influence. I remember they were amazing. Paul has always been ahead of his time in the UK, as far as I'm concerned. I've had the pleasure not only of reading his books, but working with him. I've been his promoter for 10 years. Um, we've done all sorts of seminars together. I Can Make You Thin, I Get the Life You Want, Secrets of Hypnosis, Masterclass with uh, Paul McKenna. So, But to see Paul's career, uh, to see from where he started to where he is now, uh, to these phenomenal books, uh, all these amazing books that he's written, the millions of people that he's helped around the world, how many languages it's translated, but also to see him personally, how he's grown. You know, he's 50-something now, and he's better than he's ever been, in my opinion. Uh, I think Paul is, is just a phenomenal individual, uh, very charismatic, uh, very loving guy. And I've had that pleasure of working with him. So this is a, a basically a recording of a, of a webinar that I did, a webinar stroke podcast. And Paul shares some great insights on everything about writing his book, uh, writing books, which is his preferred book, how he helps um, people with addictions, uh, sports athletes, and uh, so many other things. Uh, so it's just been an absolute great pleasure to work with him. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this nearly one hour uh, podcast. So enjoy. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All the best. So thank you so much for being here today, Paul. Not, not at all. Not at all. No, I mean, it's a pleasure. And of course, anything to, to help the cause. Brilliant. Well, uh, everyone, um, thank you for being here. We're going to start literally in a minute uh, to, you know, for those that are just joining us. And uh, we're going to be, well, just asking Paul about this phenomenal career that he's had and telling us a little bit more about all the exciting things that he's doing at the moment, like his podcast, Positivity. You must be really excited about that, no, Paul? I am. I mean, it's nice to have a hit uh it um yeah it's kind of surprised me how, how big it's become it's uh about half a million downloads it'll be over a million this year that puts it in the top 10 percent of podcasts in the world i'm told that's amazing that is amazing uh, yeah amazing. great guests really uh, really um some of them i know some of them i don't know but you know really eclectic mix of people well listen we're going to start what, what i wanted to do paul is is i for those of you that may or may not know me, I, I'm, I'm the CEO of NLP Life Training. I've had the pleasure of working with Paul for 10 years. And, uh, and Paul is guilty of, of bringing me into the world of personal professional growth uh, with his book that has helped and inspired millions of people around the world, which is Change Your Life in Seven Days. Now, it's safe to say that it changed my life. Um, but Paul, w- what a phenomenal career you've had and, and you're having. And, and, and tell me, how... How did you get into personal development? How did you get into hypnosis, into kind of this amazing journey that you're on right now? Well, um, I was working as a radio broadcaster and I was interested in yoga and meditation and uh, I'd read a bit about Zen Buddhism and and, uh, I'd had a particularly bad day. I'd I'd row with my boss, I broke up my girlfriend, the people in the apartment above me were making a noise, keeping me awake. And I had to go and interview the local hypnotist. And um, I said to this guy, you know, I asked him a few questions. And he went, hang on, you are massively stressed out. I said, yeah. He said, let me demonstrate it on you. Go ahead, knock this off. I was benevolently sceptical. And um, I relaxed. It was about half an hour, I think. Uh, and, you know, it was amazing, the process. It was, it was, I said, very relaxing. Suddenly I felt unburdened. I could see a clearer future. Um, I, I really had been transformed in that half an hour. And I said, this is brilliant. Have you got any books on this? And he gave me a book called, to borrow called Transformations by Bandler and Grinder. And I went and read this. 
I think a couple of times actually, and then began practicing on my friends to help them quit smoking, lose weight, you know, get confident. And it pretty much worked. And then I'd be at a party and people would say, oh, you know, you can't hypnotize me. And I'd say, well, let's find out, shall we? And, you know, we'd do, I'd do, get them to do something silly, you know, jump around like a ballerina or, or a kangaroo or something. And we'd all fall about laughing. And I thought, well, this is great fun. And I'd seen um, stage hypnotists before. And, um, and so I decided, well, maybe I should put on a little hypnotism show. And I did at this pub that some friends of mine owned. And a few people showed up. And the next week, quite a few people showed up. And the next week, there was queues around the block. And so I began a career then as a stage hypnotist. But simultaneously, I was doing all the self-help stuff. And the, you know, the stage shows got bigger and bigger. So eventually, I, 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 I took about half a year's salary and hired a theatre in London, put on a show and and, uh, you know, and, and it grew from there and I started doing it on television. But at the same time, I was also, you know, I, I'd do a little tiny seminar. In fact, the very first one I did, I think 10 people showed up. And uh, even though I was, you know, doing TV and I was filling out theatres with a thousand people at the time, I, I got so much joy just sitting with 10 people in a room and getting them to feel good about life and optimistic and overcoming their problems and that sort of stuff. And so um, then, you know, eventually I, I did what I could with, entertainment hypnosis and I decided that I really wanted to to work um, in the area of self-improvement and I'd been making these cassettes which you know were doing quite well um, and um, I I decided I'd read loads of pop psychology books and I thought you know what I actually I think I can do pretty much as well as anybody else because most of them now are saying the same sort of stuff and so as you rightly said at the the, the top of this um, webinar um, Bernardo, I wrote a book called Change Your Life in Seven Days. And I didn't know if it'd be a hit or not. And uh, the thing absolutely um, hit, it, hit the ball out of the park. And it became a number one bestseller uh, all over the world. And so, um, I, you know, I never thought of myself really as an author. I thought of myself as a talker. But um, that was sort of um, the beginning of the next stage. And then, you know, I, I wrote a lot of books and have sold quite a few over the last few years. Quite a few is an understatement, uh, isn't it, Paul? You, you, you've sold so many books. And, I mean, for example, Change Your Life in Seven Days, and, and I'm sure it, it must be very difficult because as an author, and having published so many successful books that have been life-changing for so many people, to pick one is probably very difficult for you. But because, you know, they, they, you, they all have a sentimental value, I, I suppose, and it was a different part of your life. Which one, which one is ho- closer to your heart? It's really hard, this. Um, the biggest selling one of them all is I Can Make You Thin, which has sold millions of copies all over the world. In fact, it, I don't know if it still is, but it was the biggest selling self-help book in British history. At one stage, you know, apart from say the Bible, if you consider that a self-help book, but it's a bit of a, had a bit of a head start on me. That um, I'd say my favourite, personally, to read is the Rich book, and I can make you rich was um, was a project I was very enthusiastic about because I'm a behavioural modeller, and I thought um, if I model people who are rich and you know discover it is how they think, how they act, their mindset, how they approach you know life. Um, maybe yeah, I'll, I'll discover a system because I liked Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And um, uh, it was um, Andrew Carnegie who commissioned him to write that book. And he went and he introduced him all these rich people. And he, and he did. He came up with a kind of a system. And so um, I thought, as that's probably one of the best selling self help books of all time, it's obviously a great category, but I'm really passionate about this. And, you know, it was, it was one of those um, experiences where as soon as I committed to it, it's as though the universe turned in my favor. You know, a few nights after I'd agreed, on, this was the book I was going to do. I was sitting at a dinner party next to Anita Roddick. And I said, um, you know, Anita, I'm doing this book. I want you to, yes, whatever it is, I'll do it. I, I've, I've got a vibe. This is, this is a very good thing to do. And, um, you know, as I was writing it, and Michael Neal was editing it. Um, uh, he said, you know, you, you need somebody really great for the Ford. And I went, well, I said, probably the, the best name to endorse this would be Richard Branson. And, you know, even though I'm a fairly positive person, but like, we'll never get him. And he went, hey, 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 well, hey, Mr. Positive. I went, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Think big. And, I mean, again, it was the weirdest thing. Richard Branson rang me up um, and asked me to do an event for him. And I said, yes. But I said, I, he said, um, what is it you want? I said, you know what I want? I'd like you to read my book 
and and do the forward if you like it. And he went, deal. So um, it was extraordinary. So suddenly, and I said, also, I need to model you. I need to study you and how you think, right? And so I spent time with these really amazing achievers. And by the way, the rich book is not just about money. It's definitely about making money, but it's about having a rich life. It's about living life on your own terms. You know, it's more than just a number in the bank, right? And so, because uh, I didn't want to create more miserable millionaires. You know, I wanted people to be <laughs> You know, and um, and so uh, I I was one of the ones I really struggled with because I, well, I, I, I made tape recordings of the people I interviewed and modelled, and I laid the transcripts all out on the floor, and I spent weeks looking at, and then suddenly, bam! I found a pattern, and then developed uh, you know different techniques and talked to people you know that, that I felt were rich, people who weren't, contrasted the two, and developed a system. So. When I'd done it, we tried it on 12 different people. Every one of them made more money and said they had a richer life. One of them went from earning, it was like something like 10,000 bucks a year. It was a very small amount, relatively, to over a million dollars in a year. Wow. And so I knew it worked. And I, but I gave it to other people. I mean, and, you know, one of my friends who's an actor, he said he wasn't particularly interested in making money. He just wanted to succeed in his, you know, in his career. And suddenly he starts getting the parts that he wants. And I remember he, 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 he came to me and he goes, hey, that rich book, I didn't read to make money, but it's made my life richer in different ways. And so I suppose if I, if right now, if I was thinking, which one of the books of the 14, 15, whatever it is, books I've written, would I, would I reread right now? It'd have to be rich. Wow. Well, I, I, I've got to say, I've, I've been lucky enough, obviously, to have read them all. Um, I think, uh, for me, obviously, um, Change Your Life in Seven Days was, was pretty amazing. But what I love about all your books, and I want, to, I want to ask you, you know, what it takes to write a book. And, but what I love about your books in general is, is they always have a very simple system that if you follow it through, uh, it, it just works. Uh, and not only it works, you then reinforce it with the phenomenal value that you add to the book, which is a CD and a DVD for under a tenner. Mm. I mean, you know, it, it's just phenomenal. So what does it take when it comes down to you to, to putting a book together? How, how does the whole idea from idea to concept to becoming a reality, how does, how does that work? Okay, it's a good question. So um, a lot of the time I work with, say I'm writing a book on sleep, I've worked with loads of people with insomnia. And so I imagine if the person's sitting opposite me, what do I need to tell them? What do they need to do? And, 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 and part of the, um, the process that's actually quite um, challenging is to make it simple, make it kind of almost foolproof, you know? So writing, because people go, oh, your books, they're just, they're just common sense, aren't they? And I go, do you know how hard it is to write common sense? You know, it's very easy to write a lot of psychobabble, but common sense, um, you know, Einstein said something like, make it as simple as possible and no simpler. And um, I also do another process where I go off down the timeline into the imagined future. And I imagine holding a book. Um, it's published and I've got it. And, and at first I just get sort of, you know, flashes, images, a sense of the tone of it. And I'll get you know, some sort of um, sense of there might be you know, short chapters, there might be exercises, there might be this, that. And it begins to become clearer and clearer during that process over the next few months. Paul McCartney does a not dissimilar thing. He, um, I was watching him being interviewed. He'd written a ballet a few years ago. And the person interviewing him said, uh, how do you write a ballet? He goes, well, sit here on opening night, curtain goes up, what I see, what I hear. And so um, I use, you know, techniques like this to help with the creativity but ultimately, I'm thinking, um, what's the person reading this um, going to think when they, you know, when, when I tell them this, 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 this? And then I test it relentlessly on people. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's something that um, it sort of gets honed. Oh, but I mean, apparently my wife was telling me because um, I've just finished another one. And so sort of halfway through, I suddenly go, oh, my God, it's going to be a disaster. This, this is like, oh, 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 this isn't going to work at all. And as, as we get towards the end, I, I become a little more confident. And then I'm just not sure at all. So I go, I don't know if it's any good. I know it's rubbish. And then I let some people whose opinion I trust read it. And they go, uh, they usually go rather, it's all right. They might say change this and this. But they go, do you know, this is all right. And then I go, Phew. And so um, uh, I wasn't aware that I got so 
um, uh, doubtful. But I think that's all part of the process. You know, like um, the Walt Disney strategy of the dreamer, the critic, the realist. He would dream something up, then he'd try it, he'd step out into another subpersonality, criticize it, and, ah, I'm not sure about this, uh, well, what about that? And then what was left, he'd be realistic about. This is from the, the, the Strategies of Genius, the Robert Diltz book. That, and I like the Disney strategy, so I think I've, I've kind of got a bit of that going on when I write a book. So there we go. That's a sort of overview of my process. But what I think is great about your books is, is the fact that you explain it consciously. You're obviously using a lot of NLP and hypnotic language within it. But yeah. then obviously it's reinforced with the, with the CDs and the audios where obviously mm. you're working with people unconsciously, which is kind of like the trigger, really. Um, so, no, I, I, I've got no doubt, Paul. I, I, this is why. How many millions of books have you sold now in how many languages? It's over 10 million. I mean, it, it's hard to say exactly because um, some countries don't report to you quite ac- that, that accurately. Um, but um, uh, And it's about, I think it's 35 countries. It might be slightly more than that. But um, uh, I, I looked the other day at the people who've uploaded onto YouTube and other social media my trances from the books, unauthorized, I should say. But so they've done it. And I started counting how many there was, and I got into the tens of millions. It was something like 30, 40 million. I can't remember. And, and I just I thought, I'll stop there. Because I had no idea in my lifetime I'd be hypnotizing millions. I, 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 I can only you know, I, I thought maybe I might get to a million people one day, something like that. But um, uh, it surpassed even my expectations. Amazing, amazing. Well, congratulations, Paul. And um, so before I, I, I jump on to asking you some specific kind of techniques and how you work with people, I actually, we were, we were just chit-chatting about your podcast, Positivity. Mm. Uh, I, I am so excited about this, Paul, for you, because obviously, you know, I, I, you started in radio. Uh, you're so good at, you know, interviewing people, talking to people, modeling people. Uh, I can see you're enjoying it. You're loving it. Uh, what fantastic caliber guests you have. Uh, and just give me some of the highlights of interviewing all these greats for you. Well, um, first of all, the, the ethos of the show is um, how do you do what you do, right? And I'm, I'm not interviewing people as a journalist. I, I'm interviewing them um, as a psychologist. I'm interviewing them um, in that sort of um, um, a style. And then it's what is your success mindset but without actually asking that question. So asking all the questions around it. So eventually suddenly you go, oh, I get it. I, I begin to see how they see the world. I begin to get, oh, that's how they think. Wow, isn't that really interesting? And it's, it's a very um, eclectic mix of people, a broad cross section of, of names, of big international names and some names of people that are very well known here in the UK. But um, the first one was Simon Cowell. First week, Simon Cowell. Uh, Warwick Davis, the actor, Gary Lineker, the, the um, champion football sports commentator, people like um, um, uh, Karen Brady, um, Prulis, um, uh, also Harry Redknapp, um, Frankie Dettori, um, just recently yeah. Heston Blumenthal, the amazing uh, chef, uh, also um, uh, um, other people like Joe Malone, you know, who creates those amazing fragrances. Uh, I'm interviewing Nick Mason from Pink Floyd tomorrow. So it's, I mean, and, and it goes on and on. And people share different things because I, I ask them lots of questions. Like, I'll ask Gary Lineker, how, how is it you scored pretty much more goals than anyone else? And he said, well, a lot of people look at the ball and they chase the ball. He says, what I did was I thought, where will the ball likely end up? And I would run into that empty space. And nine times out of 10, I'm wrong. But that one time, I got a clear shot at the goal. And, you know, someone like um, Warwick Davis talks about how he, you know, he, he lives with dwarfism, but he, he, he just doesn't think about it in a negative way. He's so relentlessly positive and optimistic. You know, he really is someone who moves towards success constantly rather than away from failure. Um, you know, and in fact, I would say there's a common trait with a lot of people uh, and it's tenacity. You know, when I ask people, you know, um, how do you, do, you, this, you just, you just don't take over an answer, says Prudith, you know, you just, you just got to keep going at it, you know. And, um, and then also, um, I ask people if you could give people one piece of advice and everything you've learned in life. Simon Cowell says, well, this get rich quick thing. I see a lot of people um, get caught with that. Um, yes, of course there are, we read about these people, but they're one in a million or billion, whatever it is. He said, you really, you've got to find something you love and then enjoy the journey rather than just got to get rich quick. Enjoy what it is that you're setting out to create. I mean, a lot of people said things like, just be nice. Harry Redknapp said, you know, I think it would be great if people were nice to each other. I interviewed Friendly for Science, the amazing author, and he said that, you know, try and be as kind as you can in life. So it's, it's very much an uplifting, um, uh, 
podcast. It's, it's not quite the same as it's not like a radio interview. In the a talk radio, um, is very much announcer driven. It's very much kind of oh, okay. Let's ask you now this. This is more like a conversation, uh, because a lot of people who listen to podcasts do so whilst they're doing something else, working out on the tube to work, in the car, you know, cooking, whatever. And so it's almost as though they're eavesdropping on a conversation. And so um, I'm, um, I'm very pleased um, with these um, uh, programs uh, because I get to either sit down with people I really like or, or meet people I've always wanted to and have a conversation with them and then make that available. So the other thing, podcast is, is listen on demand. So you can listen to it forever. Mm. And, um, and so it'll always be there as part of my body of work. Um, uh, and people can listen to it for forevermore. So if you're interested in training with Paul McKenna in London, uh, you can go to www.nlplivetraining.com. We have seminars there with Paul. Uh, there's one in particular coming up very soon called Get the Life You Want. It's a phenomenal two-day event with him and Richard Bandler, which I highly recommend. As I said, for more information, go to www.nlplivetraining.com. Thank you. If you're interested in working with me, contributing to the magazine, maybe speaking at any of our many events around the world, partnering or licensing The Best You, go to www.thebestyou.co. I, I, I love it. And, and I'm, 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 I'm so happy because kind of I've just seen how, gr- well, I know how great you are, how great you are at, uh, you know, strategy elicitation, asking the right questions to the right people at the right time. But I, I can only imagine how much valuable information, well, I know how much valuable information people get from these insights that you get. From, from these interviews. So uh, I, I thank you so much. It's just really excited for you. No, not at all. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm, I, it's, it's what, you know, that uh, saying, you know, what would you love to do so much you pay to do it? You know, or, yeah. or I know, um, find something you love to do. You never work again. Yeah. I mean, in a way, that's what I've done with this. Mm. And I've done a lot of things in my life. Um, I've really wanted to. And sometimes I've done things either for money on occasion or because I thought it'd be some good career move. And I've ended up hating it. And now I'm very fortunate. I only work with people I like or do things I like. Mm. And um, so it's the seminars I do with, with you, with Richard and you, you know, the, um, um, the books. I only write about things I think I know about or I like. This podcast project is something I really like. And, you know, so, so I'm very fortunate right now. I'm at a stage in my life where I go, oh, I've, I've kind of ticked most of the boxes. But somebody asked me uh, yesterday, what are you going to be doing in five years and 10 years from now? So that was a very good question. And I said, um, probably just more of this. I mean, I, I mean, there might be some, I'd do some more television or something like that. The, people approach me to do different things. And, um, and so I, I kind of used to say yes to a lot of things too quickly. Now I'm a little more choosy. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, because obviously you do what you want now and you do what you like. Now, I know a lot of people want to work with you. I want, I want Paul to help me. But I do know that you help a lot of people either in sports and acting, actors. Mm. I'm very interested in, in, in high-performance athletes and sports people that you've worked with in order for them to have the mindset. As you said, you know, some, some uh, footballers just lose their, lose their touch or, or, you know, some athletes or Olympians that just can't win the medals. What and how do you help or how have you helped? And if you can share some of the stories of the people that you've assisted to kind of like, you know, get back on it, get in the zone. Okay. So yeah, I've worked with people just about every sport, I would say. And there are some things that are um, generic to every sport. Um, and there's some things that are very particular. So I'll do the generic first. And the most important one of the lot is being in what athletes call the zone. Musicians call it being in the groove. Psychologists call it being in flow. And that's when you are, as you mentioned, in a peak state of performance. And, you know, you're engaged in this activity. And it's not too difficult. It's not, not too easy either. And you, you're engaged in that to the exclusion of everything else. And yet you just, you're in the, the right flow of things. You just move in the right way. You say the right things. Or you do the right things. And so um, a lot of athletes train for an event for years and say then they go to the Olympics and they walk out in the stadium and a billion people are watching them on TV and ah, suddenly they're a little bit overwhelmed and so they're not quite in the zone. And so every major sports person in the world now has somebody like me or uses the, the technologies that, that I, I use uh, or, you know, from NLP, uh, from the work of other people as well as my own. 
um, to help them to achieve. Because the difference between a medal and an also ran is 1% or less now. So the difference that makes the difference is what goes on inside your mind, which affects your body, because the mind and body are intimately linked. So the very first thing I teach all athletes to do is to reduce fear, get in the zone, be in a peak state of performance, and actually be not just mentally stronger, but physically stronger. When I was working with, say, David Williams to swim the channel, um, that involves pain and boredom because he was swimming for 11 hours, right? So we did things like we got him to vividly remember his favorite movies, you know, and some of the, the things that really made him feel good, give him the endorphins to override the pain. With, say, a racing driver or somebody in a combat sport, like a boxer or a martial artist, you want them to get, you want to get them to go into slow time. So it all slows down because if you are having to drive a car around a corner at 180 miles an hour, you want to be able to tease it around off that feel like meow. And then, um, for example, um, yeah, same with some, something like tennis. You want it to be slow and you want the ball to be slightly bigger so it's easier to hit. With a golfer, you get them to draw a flight path, hit it down a corridor, and then when they come to putt, they make the terrain exaggerated so they know how to hit the ball that's going to occur. So you, you do a lot of things in their perception. And um, the, these are the kind of um, things that apply to uh, specific sports. But in general, um, with I th- not just with athletes, with a lot of people, I'm getting them to go into peak states of performance. In fact, two people who've spoken about this publicly are Roger Daltrey, um, from the who, who's not an unconfident person, he's very confident, but he wants to be in that peak state of performance when he walks on the stage, right? And Russell Brand, the um, comedian and actor, I mean, again, he's a very confident person, but he wants to go into that peak state the moment he steps out, you know, to speak on television or, or, or in an event or something like that. So it's not always remedial um, that I'm working with. Often it's people who are already super successful, but they, the part, part of them, what makes them very successful is they want to constantly be even more successful. And so, so that would be for someone specific. And then what would it be generically? Is there, is there some kind of, because someone was just commenting on uh, now on the fact that, okay, that might be for peak performers to improve their game. Yeah. What would happen with someone that is actually not, is not reaching their potential peak? Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I've asked people over the years, who here is operating at 100% of their potential? And until a while ago, nobody had ever said yes to that. The only person who ever said yes was Matt Winklevoss, who uh, had just invented Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg. And so <laughs> I think he was allowed to say it in that moment. But um, uh, for people who are not achieving their potential, very often it could be, it could be a variety of things. It could be like in, in golf, people get the thing called the yips, which is where they start to doubt themselves and they get, you know, it's almost like a bit of a sort of panic or anxiety. And I teach them thing, ways to just go instantly calm. You know, and there's a lot of different things that are being taught now in the area of sort of resilience, and particularly even things like for the military, to get them to be in that state of calm, focused attention when they need to be. You know, not calm like I'm chill, relaxed, but calm like I am in control when they're in a very challenging situation. Um, but other people, I mean, I worked with a golfer once, a champion golfer who kept, every time he went to hit the ball, he hit it in the bunker, all right? And I said, so what happened to you? Well, I think to myself, I mustn't hit it in the bunker. Now, um, in, what happens is the unconscious doesn't process the negation. So if I say, don't think of elephants, you feel elephants before you make it not, yeah? And uh, so I said, you know, why don't you think I mustn't hit the ball in the hole? He went, what? I went, just humor me. He went, I mustn't hit the ball in the hole, <laughs> right next to the hole. So um, sometimes it's a very specific thing to an individual that you have to figure out in order to, to help them because, you know, they're, they're, um, they've developed either some sort of bad habit or, or you know, something's happened that's gone on. And, um, and so that really requires sometimes personal work. But, you know, when I work with groups, for example, very, uh, my, my thing is that um, I want everyone to be able to take away something because if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man a fish, he eats for life. So give people things to take away that they can use in their everyday life or in their particular, you know, their career and their sports activities, or whatever it is, that will make it better and better. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I've just got one question that someone put in here, and then I want to ask you a couple of questions about Richard. Uh, yeah. So uh, addiction. Mm. Now, I know a lot of the people you've also helped, because you've helped people with, in so many different ways, obviously with weight loss issues. And Would you say addiction is one of the things that you've assisted, helped people most with? Or well, 
Um, yes and no. I mean, what I did was I, I people, exp- um, people want hypnotists to help them quit smoking. And, um, uh, for example, hypnosis is actually statistically the best way to quit smoking in the world. And so uh, that is indeed an addiction. But it's a different addiction to, say, overeating, right? And so because, you know, you're not, you're not born wanting a cigarette, right? That's something you have to train yourself to do. And then you get reliant upon it. But you are born wanting to eat. So, see, so sometimes these things get mixed up. So, yes, something like a smoking addiction. I've helped a lot of people with, and there's a number of different uh, things that I do. In fact, usually, um, I mean, again, I like, uh, this is what a Richard Bandler approach, called a threshold pattern. Usually people that want to quit have um, had several reasons to. They've had a health scare or friends had a health scare, you know, they've become socially unacceptable and other, other friends have quit and they want to quit. And very often people wait until it's, it's either too late or it's, it's not great. And so what you do is you get people to think about the times over and over again when they wanted to quit. They thought, I've really got to do it. And, and they feel a bit uncomfortable. And then you get them to think about the thought of having a cigarette. And at that moment, the whole thing seems very unattractive. And you do that over and over and over again. So you condition their mind to associate cigarettes with unattractive feel, with un, you know, uncomfortable feelings rather than, oh, yeah, I think I'll have one of those and it'll be good. Instead, they go, oh, no, I don't think I'll have one of those because I think I'll be healthy and live. Now, with, say, something like um, food and overeating, Many people eat because they're emotional eaters. And, you know, if someone's overweight, it's not their fault. It's the fault of their programming, their, their unconscious programming. Usually they've picked up habits which have become, you know, familiar and exaggerated earlier in life, and then they carry them later in life. And the great thing is with hypnosis and with NLP is you can use it to change behaviors that people have had all their lives. And so that they, um, you know, they're able to, say, stop doing one thing that start doing another because I don't think we really break a habit. I think we change it for another habit. So it's not just enough to stop doing one thing. It's to start doing something which is just as rewarding, but actually healthier for you in a better way. Yep. That's great advice. Thank you, Paul. So, okay. So when you started reading and I, and I've heard the story before because you, and you shared it in the books. So there was this name, this, that kept popping up when you were reading all these books and it was Richard Bandler. So yeah. tell me how you got to meet Richard and was like, I know you rocked up in one of his seminars and, and it was, well, it's been a beautiful journey since for all of us. So how did that happen? Okay, so um, I, I, I began, I read Transformations, uh, which is still the best book on hypnotism ever, ever written, I think. And I then began you know, studying Milton Erickson and, and just finding everything I could about hypnosis. And I, uh, I actually, I saw that Richard Bandler was doing a seminar in London and I was um, I was working on television. My career had really you know, begun to take off then. And I went down to, to see the seminar, and he walked on the stage, and within like 10 minutes, I went, this is the greatest thing. This is someone I can learn from. This guy's so funny, smart. I mean, super smart. And he had this kind of irreverent sense of humor. and Brilliant. So I just went, right, I cleared my diary. I went, I'm staying here for like the next, what, three weeks, I think it was. And... Um, I, I went up to say hello to him, and I because see I was a stage hypnotist at the time, and a lot of clinicians looked down the nose at the stage hypnotist. You know, <laughs> all the proper stuff, you know. But he's a very open-minded guy, so he went. I said oh, hello. I'm. Uh, he goes yes. I've seen you on TV. I said uh, <laughs> okay. He goes, I like your show, and basically I just pestered Richard. I, I you know I said I really want to learn from you, and you know I flirt to San Francisco. I said I'm in town. Can I come? He goes okay, kiddo. Come by about. I'll come by and pick you up about midnight, and because uh, he, you know, he didn't, he wasn't keeping regular hours. And we go off to a studio, record something, and I'd sit and listen. And, and I wrote a, a pop book about hypnotism, right? Um, and this was actually just before I met Richard. And uh, we, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to double back on this. I wrote, I wrote a popular book about it, and when I looked at the index at the back, I realised I'd quoted Richard Bandler more than anyone else. Mm-hmm. And so I thought I must like this guy. And that's why I then, you know, uh, went to the seminar and then we became friends. And I just basically, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I followed him around the world and we go to events and trainings, things like that, and learn from him. And, um, and then, you know, I would go sit with him and record him and ask him questions for hours and hours, you know. And this was like a regular practice for me. And, um, and then I'd read the transcript uh, back and I go, oh, look, he's 
putting things into my mind here, all good stuff, by the way. And I realized, you know, the power of the indirect uh, suggestions. And so one of the great things about working with him is no two seminars are ever the same. I mean, I don't know if you find this, but we have people, uh, people come up to us all the time who say, oh, did this training a couple of years ago. I thought I'd come back for a refresher, but it's, 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 it's got moved on, hasn't it? It's evolved. And I say, yes, because um, he's always evolving. You know, the great hypnotist Milton Erickson was very much um, about solving problems. It was remedial work. Whereas Richard Bandler, I see, is much more interested in human evolution. So he's looking at um, not, not just helping people get over problems, but helping people to actually become the best version of themselves. And I think that's a pretty noble goal. Well, uh, I was very lucky, as many people have. And, and obviously, so you and, and Richard then eventually started running uh, the trainings here in London. And you've together trained tens of thousands of people, practitioners, master practitioners, all the seminars you did. And, um, and, uh, and thanks to you, then I, I took over with NLP Live Training and continued to run what you started. But, I mean, London now it, it, it is or has been the hub uh, for NLP in the world, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, 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 I, think it's, it, yeah, I think it's the world centre for NLP. I mean, I know, uh, certainly, as, as you say, you know, I know uh, one stage when we looked at, we did some sort of analysis of it, more people were training in NLP each year in, in London than anywhere else. I mean, it's not to say there are a lot of people training elsewhere because, I mean, you know, it's huge in Italy, in Japan, in America, in Australia, in, you know, um, I don't know, Germany, in Holland. You know, it's all over the world. NLP is, 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 is being um, taught. I mean, I went the other day to Lithuania and I'd never been before. And I thought, oh, maybe a few hundred people. Show. 1,800 people. And they were well into it. And, I, I, you know, so it was really quite a surprise to me, um, you know, just how popular it is in other parts of the world. I mean, um, you know, when I suddenly find that, you know, my book sales in a particular country have gone ballistic, you know, and I, I'm Russia. Really? I've got a lot of fans in Russia. I didn't even knew that. And, and so um, that's because there is a thirst for, um, uh, for, for, for NLP in particular, I think, because it's a relatively new uh, technology. Um, and it's constantly evolving, and it's used by every major corporation in the world, every government, uh, and any good therapists were using some NLP as well. And of course, coaches and people in the, the world of personal development. Well, and, and what's great about it, as you as you pointed out, Paul, obviously you know you're much better hypnotist now than you were 20 years ago, and obviously Richard himself, he's evolved. Uh, but what, what I what I love about these these seminars in particular is is obviously how much goes in unconsciously as you as you pointed out you know it's, it's the same with me sometimes I say something where did that come from and you think it, <laughs> so he planted it on me like you know ten years ago and it's coming out now so yeah. it's amazing how much we learn unconsciously which obviously people aren't necessarily aware if they're not NLP trained um, so Paul um, you and and Richard. When you get together, it's it's phenomenal. It's it's tremendously magical. Uh, so I want to. We'll talk. A, we're going to finish just talking about kind of what's going to happen in October. But but what I wanted to know is what, why is it so special for you? Because you know there, there's a synergy and energy and phenomenal you know friendship between you when you go on stage. Mm. What is so magical sharing the stage with Richard? Well, um, I mean. <sighs> Richard's got very high standards for a start, you know, so it's like tr playing football with George Best or, you know, jamming with Jimi Hendrix. I mean, you know, you, you realise you're, you're playing in the big league with him. Yeah. And as I mentioned, no two events are ever the same because he's always upping the game, right? And um, he brings um, this extraordinary sense of, you know, excitement and curiosity about life. He's so much humour. And, and also... Um, this sort of feeling that anything's possible. I mean, I think he kind of thinks he's invincible. You know, he's got this sort of extraordinary mindset. And so that's infectious in a positive way. And, um, and so what I love about doing the two events we do, the Secrets of Hypnosis we did a few weeks ago, and the one in October, the Get the Life You Want event, which is very much more a Positive life change, you know, the sort of benefits you get are, um, yeah, well, you, you're in a room for two days with two hypnotists. So, you know, change is very likely to happen in a good way. Confidence, optimism, joy, uh, creativity, being able to overcome problems, turn them around, you know, and get very clear about what it is you want in life and go for it. And, um, and so, you know, the people that come in on Saturday morning, 
you know, they are not the same as the people that leave on the Sunday night. And, you know, those are people who, you know, who've got a, a very optimistic um, uh, direction in life. Um, many of them have overcome problems or things that were holding them back. And they're clear about what it is they want and they feel confident to go for it. That's what I would say. And so one of the reasons I love doing these with Richard is they are a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I don't know how much longer we'll do them for. I hope for a very long time. But, um, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I think, um, uh, so I've done this in the past, well, yeah, I really must get around to it. And then it stopped or, you know, something's happened. So, so I would say, um, to, to, because I'm always encouraging people to do them. I mean, again, I, I don't need um, uh, to, to do anything else ever again. I really love doing this. And one of the reasons is, is I love seeing the changes in the people. I mean, even this weekend, I was at another uh, event working and I worked with some people and, and it was just awesome to see them because um, they, these both people I work with um, as demonstrations were, we were held back by things in life to see them free of that and to see them being able to, uh, you know, fulfill their dreams is a wonderful thing. That's kind of my motivation. Plus also it's a lot of fun, you know, to, to, to work with people, you know, just uh, to have fun with them. And, and, you know, that's very much our emphasis. It's not just learning. It's, it's not a lecture, right? It's an event. It's a very dynamic experiential event and no one has to do anything they don't want to, but, um, it's, you know, you get engaged with it. And, uh, funny enough, yesterday I was with some friends who'd been on the last event and, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of them and a couple of them, they, they didn't really know what they were coming to, but they just came along to keep the others company. And they said, they, they, they couldn't help themselves from getting involved in it all because it was so exciting. And, and as a consequence, I've had some positive life changes. If you're interested in watching the video content of this interview and many others, or interested in learning from world leaders and teachers, go to www.thebestyou.online. Yeah, and that's one of the things I think you mentioned the word fun and, and one of the things that it's just obviously kind of when, when, when we bring humor uh, and we laugh at our problems like, you know, like Richard does. Yeah. Then, then we're, and, and we're also open to learning, but they're very, very practical. And, and I've experienced that at the events that you, maybe someone came in and they were just sitting in the room and all of a sudden they send us an email saying, I quit smoking or yeah, yeah, I, yes. I, all of a sudden I lost weight. How did that happen? <laughs> So that's what you guys do. Well, I think so. I mean, for a while, we used to call Richard's style stand-up therapy because he, you know, he's as funny as any comedian. Um, but at the same time, he's doing all this intricate stuff with language and it's hypnotic. And so suddenly some people go, hang on, I suddenly, I, I don't feel burdened by this. Or, oh, I can see how to, to do that, to handle this. Where did that come from? And a lot of that is being in the presence of, you know, a real master by Richard Bandler. And, you know, and also the other thing is, is um, people who are already pretty good um, NLPers, they want to come along to the source because it's a bit like um, the source of where it came from. I mean, you know, if you wanted to learn physics, go to Einstein. If you want to learn painting, go to Picasso. If you want to learn NLP, Richard Bandler. You know, that's the source of, of NLP. And also if you're a hypnotist, well, of course, you know, uh, he's about the best in the world, I would say. Yeah, and, and just to finish, I mean, one of the things I'd like to add to that, it's like if, you, if you're into music and you know how to play the guitar, you say, oh, I'm not listening to music anymore. That's it. I know, I, I know, I know how it works. Yeah. And but what, what I think is people miss, and this is kind of what I wanted to point out, is NLP, as we do get it, I mean, NLP is we're modulars. So we're always there. It's not about necessarily what's going to happen, which is going to happen consciously and unconsciously. It's about learning from the best, what you guys do and, and, and your tricks. Mm. Paul, you're a phenomenal speaker and, and, and you engage, you're charismatic, uh, great humor. Give, and, and we'll end with this, just, just give us some, some tips and ideas for, for those people that, you know, want to wanna make a living of, of going on stage and, and helping people, but, you know, becoming a speaker, which obviously is an important thing. So um, in order to be a really good um, speaker, I think you need a bunch of things. Um, first thing is um, you've got to be in the right state, Right. The, the right neurophysiological state. And, um, and I would say confidence is a good place to be. Now, confidence doesn't mean you're in everyone's face. Confidence, you know, those people like that, they're very unconfident. It's people who are comfortable in their own skin, who are very natural and authentic. And you also need to have a passion about what you're talking about. Because I've seen people who are not professional speakers, but they, they're very passionate about what it is they want to tell you. And that makes them irresistible to listen to. And so 
And one of the things that I do when I'm working with people who, um, you know, who've got to give presentations is I, I get them to remember times they felt very confident and I get them to step back into those times and relive them, see what, to see what they saw, hear what they heard, feel how they felt, like they're back there again now. And so they'll, they'll actually begin to uh, recreate those feelings of being confident. See, a lot of people are very confident when they're speaking with, say, their friends because they're not worried about being judged. But they get up in front of a group and they feel, ooh, scared. So I get them to remember what it's like to speak to people who they really like speaking to. And I get them to create that state very, very strong and learn it and create what we call in NLP an anchor. So, you know, squeeze their thumb and fingers together every time they do it. So after a while, they just do that. And they go, oh, yeah, I remember the confident state. Then what I get them to do is to to really concentrate on what makes them passionate about what it is that they're saying, right? Um, and and also um, to think about, to some extent, what do other people need to hear or need to see in order to be captivated, in order to be, um, you know, absolutely transfixed and to find this of use? You know, what what's the message? What's your message, right? And also, um, like in all things that you sell, sell the benefits, you know. So um, talk about up front how this is, you know, whatever it is that you're talking about is going to be of use to people. And then... One of the things that I find really interesting is to step into somebody you think of as very charismatic and borrow from their confidence, their charisma. And that's right. And then stand the way they stand, breathe the way they breathe, smile the way they smile, so that you have some of that confidence that they have. And then after a while, you'll develop that more naturally. So there's there's three very simple principles that I use with people when I'm helping them to become more confident, more charismatic as a speaker. Because, you know, a lot of people, they try and learn it like a script and they sort of speak like this. And, and you know, funny enough, when I, I was training with Richard early on and he said, you know, yes, I've noticed you sort of do the same rap each time and he kind of likes like a script. I went, yeah. He goes, well, I think you should just, you should just go and speak. I went, what? And he goes, yeah. He says, you know about hypnosis. I said, yes, I do. He goes, well, go ahead and just speak about it. And I went, without scripts. He went, then, of course, he did one of his crafty things. He says, well, and he's chatting away. I mean, oh, he's up to, he's up to his monkey. And I started to go, yeah, I can. I just go and speak to him like I was talking to somebody in, you know, in my office or something. You know? And so I walked out. And I went, so we'll talk about this. And it all just flowed. And from that moment on, um, I mean, I'm not saying I don't use a, a, a sort of a, a template for scripts or for things, but but from that moment on, I didn't use, need to use a script. I just spoke authentically, and I felt so much more comfortable with audiences. And the way I look at it is if I can do it, you can do it. And that's sort of the premise I, I teach from. Well, I've got to say, Paul, and I don't mean this because I'm not saying this because obviously we, we've been working together a long time, but I have been involved, attended, promoted many speakers by far, you, you are, if not the best, one of the best. I mean, you are just so natural on stage. And I want to thank you so much. Paul, is there anything else you would want to add before we, we go? Um, just, um, you know, it's always a pleasure working with you, Bernardo. I mean, we've been doing this, as you say. Um, you, you, you took over the mantle about 10 years ago, and, you know, you've, you've run with it. Uh, you've really uh, done great things with it, bringing NLP to lots of people, you know, from uh, all walks of life, you know, a very... Um, wide cross section of people and all ages, all backgrounds, you know, um, all kinds of demographics, you know, and, um, and so and I know you have a real passion for this too. And, you know, that's why we do the, the events that we do. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I always get excited. I, it's net, by the way, it's not, it's it involves work because it's, there's a lot of concentration gets into it, but it's fun and and it's always something I'm I'm looking forward to. I mean, I'm already looking forward to October, and I just know, um, you know, it's going to be fun. It's always a blast. It really is great fun. Oh, it always is. It always is. Well, Paul, listen, I want to thank you so much, and looking awesome. forward to seeing you soon again. Take okay. care. Thank you, my friend. Right. Take care. God bless. Take care, Bernardo. Bye bye. Well, I want to thank you all that you've been here today. I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to ask more questions. Obviously, there's so many people wanting to ask things and it's just we just haven't got enough time. But I do want to share with you, with your permission, just literally, if you wanted more information related to the uh, upcoming course with Paul and Richard, well, here you go. You go to nlplivetraining.com and then if you just click on the seminars button, you're going to find Get the Life You Want. So Paul and Richard, uh, we're running a seminar. It's on the 5th and 6th of October. Uh, and the way it works with us is that this course sells out every single year. We're expecting probably anything between 500 to 800 people. It sells out every single year. It's one of the most affordable, if not the most affordable course we have. 
Um, it's a two-day two day course with Richard and Paul, both of them, on stage, both days. And uh, it's just a life-changing course. Now, we do have uh, the opportunity for you to book, and that's how it works. The sooner you book, the more you save. The tickets will go up to 450 pounds right now until the 15th it's going to be at 255 if you're watching this uh, webinar now well i just wanted to uh, give you the opportunity to book if you book between today and tomorrow and you uh, book and then send us a booking confirmation and just write the word webinar we will send you a free book that's going to be a free book from paul mckenna uh, any of the books that we have in stock We'll send it to you as a thank you for booking in the next 24 hours. So you just go to the web page, click, go through the process. As I said, it's 255. Right now, it will go up to £455. It's a life-changing course. It's being held at the Novotel in Hammersmith, in central London. It's two days of magical, magical learnings, teachings, lots of fun with Richard and Paul. And uh, apart from that, well, listen, I, I want to thank you. Um, if you have any questions uh, for me right now, I'm still going to be online for another uh, five or 10 minutes. So I'll be delighted to ask you anything else. As I said, I, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't answer all the questions that we had, but we had loads. So if there's already, uh, I've got Minnie saying that she's already booked. Well done, Minnie. Thank you so much. Uh, Hugh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Hugh McLinden, he runs the Legacy Club up in uh, mid Ulster. Thank you. Um, and if any of you, well, basically, if you have any questions, I'm still around, any questions related to the course or any questions related to any of the other uh, subjects related to kind of what we cover with NLP Live Training, which is also the NLP practitioner and the master practitioner. So Robert is asking, can the course help with stage fright? Yes, it absolutely can. It's definitely one of the things that we teach at the NLP practitioner course. But yes, uh, Part of what you're going to be learning there is to become more confident. Uh, remember, Paul brings uh, and Richard, they bring demonstrations throughout the two days. It's not We can't guarantee all of you will be going on stage because it's not possible. But they will be covering aspects related to something that might be affecting you. It might be motivation. It might be confidence. It might be low self-esteem. It might be weight loss. But what happens is because Richard and Paul are obviously very sneaky hypnotists, they're putting all these uh, embedded commands and they're using this hypnotic language in you. And basically, it's not necessarily who he's speaking to. He might be speaking to you because he's literally speaking to all of you. OK, so that's pretty much it. Um, when Dr. Richard and Paul event, well, no, they don't do this event in the US, I'm afraid. The Get the Life You Want is an event that we only hold in London. A lot of the courses that Paul and Richard do, well, we only hold in London. And a lot of the courses that Richard does, we only hold in London, like the personal enhancement workshop. But um, we're running, the course is in October, 5th and 6th of October. And that's it. It's We only run that course once a year. And at the moment, we have it booked for this year. We don't know if we're going to be running it next year. Uh, Joanna, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. As I said, all you do is you go to nlplivetraining.com. Find the seminar, get the life you want. You can buy one ticket, two tickets, or as many tickets as you want. And we will, uh, once you've booked, send us the receipt and the booking confirmation. Just put in the subject line, webinar, free book, and then we'll ask you for an address and we will send you a free book from Paul as a thank you for booking. It has to be done within the next 24, 48 hours. And this is an offer that's valid for now. The price goes up literally every 15 days. It will be available still for another few more days. I think it's the 13th or 14th of June. But after that, it will go up. And any of you that know how we operate in NLP Life Training, I can guarantee you it will. Uh, Geraldine says that she's already booked. Great. Thank you. And uh, Vivian says that she's been to our seminars and uh, the events are great. Thank you so much, Vivian. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, what else? Uh, Blanche, thank you. My pleasure. Glad to see you here. Well, Blanche, my recommendation is you go and speak to Steve and uh, I'm sure there is something that he can do for you. So you've got his email. If not, send an email to info at thebestyou.co or at info at NLP Live Training, and we can help you and assist you. So if you have any more questions, uh, I appreciate it. If for whatever reason you're coming from, I don't know, either London or you've got access to a big network or group of people and you want to bring them all along, well, we've got some great packages or offers if you're going to book with more or five, more than five or ten people. This year we have a VIP ticket as well. 
which is available for you, is limited only to 100 people. And all we're doing with that is what we're including fast uh, registration. You also have access to uh, lunch, teas and coffees. We're going to throw some books in there as well and some free merchandise, the NLP Live Talks. So check all the stuff, all the content, the great material that we're going to give you with the VIP ticket in case you want it to book. Uh, yes, Fernanda, quite rightly, if you are a Best You Legacy Club member, you get a 10% discount. If you don't know what a Legacy Club member is, oh my God, or well, you can go to the bestyoulegacyclub.com and find out, but there's great advantages. And uh, if you are a member, you get a 10% discount on any training in particular. So yeah, Fernanda, come on. You haven't been to a seminar for at least a couple of weeks with us. Uh, Geraldine is asking, are we running the hypnosis next year? Not sure at the moment. We haven't got the dates confirmed at this time and point. We don't know. We don't think so. But right now, the courses that we have are in October, the NLP practitioner, the master practitioner, get the life you want, and the personal husband. All those courses are available right now. If you have any further questions for me, if you're interested in finding out more how you could be, I don't know, involved as part of the crew or you want to work with us, please feel free to do so. I want to thank you so much, all of you, for being here today. Uh, if you have any further questions, please don't doubt to contact us. It, there is a chat, so if you go to the nlplivetraining.com and then you click on the Simon R, Get the Life You Want, you'll see there's a little chat box there. My team are available pretty much 24-7 to reply or respond to any question you may have. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can call the office plus 44207-927-6500. And uh, if you want to email us, email us at info at nlplivetraining.com. Follow us on the Facebook group. We have the Bandler McKenna community, which is a great group to be part of. Lots of assets and resources in there or follow us on the Facebook of NLP Live Training. Again, we're always updating all sorts of information there. Mimi, what was the other course, Personal What? It's called Personal Enhancement. That's a very exclusive workshop with Dr. Richard Bandler. It's limited to 15 people, very exclusive. It's by application only. It's on the webpage, NLP Live Training. Go down to and you will find Personal Enhancement Workshop. You can apply. You would like to be more involved in NLP. Well, Blanche, please reach out. We're very familiar with you and we'd love to be able to uh, help you. Well, I want to thank you all for being here today. And um, I look forward to... Uh, Mark uh, is just asking a question. You missed the start of the webinar. Well, it was on Facebook Live. So if you have uh, missed part of it, it will be on our NLP Live Training Facebook page. You can see it there. And obviously, it will be recorded. And we will be sharing it in our list. So if you're in our database, we will be sharing that too. Okay? I want to thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here. Have a great evening. And I hope to see you at Get the Life You Want on the 5th and 6th of October with Paul McKenna, Richard Bandler. And take advantage of the early bird price now. Thank you so much. Take care. All the best. Bye, Andre. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.